Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with Jar Mithlin. This is the very first episode of my Which Was Worse series, where I'm going to be taking a look at title reigns, reigns of terror, whatever you want to call them, booking decisions, matches, pay-per-views, and that have somewhat of a similar theme and decide which was worse. And it could be just the theme of them taking place in the same month, having similarities as how they were booked, were they booked like shit? Generally they were, because hence the Which Was Worse title. But I'm going to figure out which was worse between these two, even if both were pretty damn bad. But, I want to give a quick shout out to Hit, at Hitman683 for the inspiration for this series. Thank you very much. I know you suggested this topic, maybe not a year ago, but months ago, and recently suggested it to me, and I finally started writing this stuff down. So again, thank you very much for the inspiration for this. Um, <clears throat> now today, very first episode, so this is a big shout out to him because this is the first one he suggested. Jeff Jarrett's Reign of Terror in NWA TNA, and Triple H's Reign of Terror with the world title. I'm going to not focus on Jeff Jarrett being the champion um, before June of 2004. It's going to be June of 2004 to May of 2005. And it's going to be Triple H's Reign of Terror from like September 2002 to August 2003, even though Triple H did lose the title for a little bit during that time. For this reason. Because both guys were positioning themselves as the head of the company. I mean, Triple H, it was like, it was fucking ridiculous how it became the Triple H show. And I did an entire video on Triple H's Reign of Terror. Like, separate video, so I'll probably skip over some of the stuff about it. But I will hit the bullet points. But I mainly ranted about and I encourage you guys to check that out if you want to hear me get angry about the fact that Triple H shouldn't have beaten Booker T at WrestleMania 19. It took him 23 fucking seconds. To pin him after a pedigree. And it was a goddamn race angle and Triple H should have, you know, fucking lost. He shouldn't have won. I almost say he should have won. If, if it hadn't been a race angle and Triple H had won, okay, whatever. But Booker T should have won. So anyway. What's similar about these? Well, think about it. One of the first people that, you know, Triple H feuded with was a guy from another company, even though he'd been with the company for a little bit. Triple H feuded with RVD at first. And then feuded with Kane at WWE, <coughs> Stallworth, Stallworth. And then feuded with Shawn Michaels, his buddy, and then started feuding with WCW guys in later 02 into 2003, until he lost the title to Goldberg and Unforgiven, oh, you know, Unforgiven 2003, which actually now that I think about it, it was almost a full goddamn year for Triple H, and the same, it was almost a full goddamn year for Jeff Jarrett. So, you got... Triple H doing all that stuff with, you know, at first, a guy from another company, and then, you know, a big monster that they had built for a while. Even though Kane had been with the company for about five years by that point. And he started feuding with old WCW guys. Now let's take a look at Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett won the match, or won, won the title back from Ron, uh, Ron Killings was champion at the time. It was the first ever King of the Mountain match, I believe. I think it was the first ever. At the two at the two year anniversary show that would later become Slam Anniversary that uh, Impact would hold every single year and some Slam Anniversary shows were actually pretty good and I might do a Slam Anniversary history at some point where I talk about some of my favorite moments from there I know I did uh, Slam best and worst Slam Anniversary matches so from last year so you guys can check that out but you got to take a look at it. Jeff Jarrett knew that he wouldn't walk out on the company because it was his company. I pretty much think part of the reason it wasn't just to create an alternative to Vince McMahon and take it to Vince McMahon, it was also so Jarrett could make himself world champion. I believe that Jeff Jarrett would be that petty. Now, he did put over some guys later in his career. I'm not going to doubt that. And he wasn't even actually NWA champion until about five and a half months into the company when he beat Ron Killings. And he lost to AJ Styles, and there was some back and forth and stuff like that, and Whatever. And he had a good feud with Raven in 03. But looking from when he won it at King of the Mountain in 2004. So I said about Triple H facing RVD, a man from another company that had been with the company for about a year, but still was getting hit, was getting his feet actually a year, yeah, by, by a year and a half almost. And then you look at one of the first guys that Jeff Jarrett feuded with after he had won the title. Now, uh, Impact, you know, TNA Impact had just started about around this time. On Fox Sports Net. <clears throat> that's, a, that's how long ago it was. And it was when the Impact Zone had, like, you could seat, like, 400 people. And actually, I think it was 500, but still, it was really small. They hadn't expanded the seating and stuff. But they were on there, and they were also on weekly pay-per-view. 
So they were building this whole thing with uh, Jeff Hardy had just made um, his you know debut in the company like very recently, and they built up this whole thing to this uh, match with Jarrett and Jeff Hardy, and it was on one of the um, Impact Weekly pay per view things that they were doing still because <clears throat> they were trying to let that contract run out, and then do you know big three hour pay per views which. Be honest, a lot of the Impact Wrestling pay per views actually were better than some of the WWE pay per views during that time, especially 04 to 09. My personal opinion, of course. Not everyone was good, but enough of them were. But so you had a few months into the company, you had Jeff Jarrett feuding with Jeff Hardy, and there was this whole big schmoz, and it was a way to have Jarrett win or keep the title to push to another match later down the road, a few months later. <clears throat> and you got Triple H feuding with RVD, and he just squashes RVD and that kind of stuff. With goofy, with you know goofiness at the end, Flair in particular turning on RVD, and that was it. Then you had um, you you had him squashed. So it took a little longer in Impact to build. Where after that whole thing, you got to Victory Road, uh, two thousand four. After some build and that kind of stuff, and Jarrett was also kind of feuding with Monty Brown a little bit too, because Monty Brown was super over. But then you had the whole thing that happened to Victory Road where it looked like Jeff Hardy was going to capture the title. And it would have been, I'm not saying it would have been great. I don't know if Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy shouldn't have been champion at that point. And it was smart for them not to give him the title, given how he given how he would end up acting very soon after. But you had the whole thing where you had Scott Hall and Kevin Nash come down with guitars. <clears throat> and they screwed over Jeff Hardy. They made this appearance and this kind of stuff and it was ridiculous. Because there's more former WCW guys. Which, whatever. I mean, WCW, WWE guys. Whatever. It, it gave Jared a bit of a stable. And it was like the Kings of Wrestling. Which I think lasted for like two months. And then Scott Hall got released from the company. Due to one of his many issues. And that Glee cleaned up from those. And seems to be battling sobriety every day. Which I'm sure battling sobriety is a tough thing. And hopefully he can beat it. You know, can keep being sober and everything. Same with Jake Roberts and various others. Anyway. So you have Jeff Jarrett doing that whole thing with Jeff Hardy. And Jeff Hardy gets screwed over. And Jeff Hardy doesn't really get much of a return match after that. And then you had Triple H, you know, after the RVD thing. He feuded with Kane. The whole Katie Vick angle. Which was dog shit. And I ranted about that before. And I'll probably rant on it in the Times of Wrestling to piss me off show at some point. And then Triple H feuds with one of his friends. You know, Shawn, you know, Shawn Michaels. Puts him over in the Elimination Chamber with the idea that Sean was going to give him the belt back like a month later. <clears throat> um, and that kind of stuff. So now we go to December 2002. Triple H beats uh, Shawn Michaels. Two out of three falls match. And then he starts feuding with uh, Scott Steiner soon afterwards. So the first ever old WCW guy. Now, they build... Because they built up Kane all of a sudden, like in WWE. They built him up all of a sudden to just be boop boop and... They were going to put him in the you know main title picture just as a way to get Triple H over. They built up Monty Brown like crazy. He had this, I believe, this undefeated streak. He won the first ever Monsters Ball match that they had done, and he, I believe, that was at Victory Road twenty, you know, two thousand four rather. And Monty was getting super over, and then on a Fox Sports Net um, match, they had an NWA title match, and <clears throat> I talked about it at length in a time to re another times of wrestling to piss me off show. And yeah, I'm plugging a lot of shows during this, but you had Monty take everything and everything and just, no, it, I'm not saying no sell it, but get to where he was like going to look like a monster, but then Jared ended up beating him. So it killed Monty Brown's momentum. And then it was Jared, it was, let's see, Monty, DDP, Nash, in like a three-way match where if you went outside or over the top rope to the floor, you were eliminated. So it was like a triple threat battle royal, which was kind of dumb. But I guess it was a way to protect everybody. <coughs> but yeah, the Monty Brown got the right to face him. I believe got the right to face him and still lost. Again. So that pretty much killed him. And then Triple H does a whole feud with Scott Steiner. Which I talked about and it was a rotten feud and went on for a couple months. You then had... Um, D you had Jeff Jarrett feud with... Kevin Nash, another WCW guy, former WCW guy. And it was just a way to bring in these veterans where, like, oh, Jarrett's title reigns mean something. And this that was in February against all odds 2005. And it was supposed to be a first blood match. And <clears throat> they brought out this, like, hollowed-out cello 
and that kind of stuff, because I think the guitar was banned, but a cello wasn't, because a cello was different. It actually is a different instrument. But they did that, and Nash could not work at that point, really couldn't. And the whole First Blood thing, I think he had like a barely a cut on his face, and he was, it was done. That that was rotten. And I think that was Kip James' uh, Billy Gunn's debut, which was kind of silly. I think he was called the Outlaw at first, and then they had to dub it over Kip James. I don't know why they thought calling him the Outlaw wouldn't gain the ire of Vince. But so he beats an old WCW guy. <coughs> Triple H beating an old WCW guy. Scott Steiner in two straight pay-per-views. Two rotten pay-per-views, by the way. And the No Way Out 2003 match was about that much better. And then you get to the whole <coughs> terrible angle that they had with Booker T. And you go back to March in Impact and, you know, Jeff Jarrett had beaten DDP. So right there, you got two former WCW guys that Jeff Jarrett had beaten, and Triple H had beaten, two, you know, a former WCW guy twice. Now he's feuding with Booker T, and it was a terrible angle. Fetch me a towel. Someone like you will never be champion. You know, you're, you're supposed to dance for me. Fucking Christ, how'd, that, how'd they get away with that shit? <clears throat> Booker T should have won that goddamn feud. And that's the whole point of that. So you got that there, and you got... so. If you take the totality of it, for near for pretty much a year, Triple H had had a stranglehold on the world title, with the exception of like one month, where he lost it to Shawn and then gained it back from him. So yeah, he had about a nine a nine consecutive you know nine months consecutive in a row. By the way, in case you didn't know what consecutive means, where he held the title, but he held it for like eleven out of twelve months. So he beats Booker T. Another WCW guy. And then he feuds with Kevin Nash. And this is back in 2003, by the way. So he feuds with Kevin Nash. Judgment Day 03. Terrible, terrible spot, by the way. You know, after the DQ where Nash, you know, jackknifes him through the announcer's table and doesn't quite get it cleared. So Triple H jacks his neck up. Or if he didn't, I'm amazed. And then faced him a bad blow in 2003. One of the worst Hell in a Cell matches ever. They had to bring Foley in and have him bleed to even get some, you know, good stuff going with it. So then you got that. So we're about six months in. Now with Jared, the, the, the Nash match wasn't that good. The one with DDP was fine. They, they always had pretty good matches. <laughs> and then you get to April. And with April, by this point, it was... It was, let's see. It was Jared, Kip James, and Monty Brown. Monty Brown had aligned himself with Jared at this point. With the idea that, oh, he would get a title shot at some point. It was stupid. Made Monty Brown look foolish. No wonder Monty Brown left TNA at like a year and a half later. And I hope he's doing pretty well for himself now because I know he had to leave WWE about a year into his contract. Um, I think his sister died and he had to take care of their kids and he was a personal trainer, if I recall correctly. But, so they didn't even have an NWA title match at the, um, at lockdown. It was lethal lockdown. It was DDP... It's DDP and a couple people. I think, let's see. I don't remember actually who DDP was uh, teaming with. I'm sorry, I don't remember. But I know it was against, I believe, Planet Jarrett at the time was what it was called. It was, you know, Jarrett, Monty Brown, I believe, and Kip James, I believe, was in that. And I think you might have even had Brian James in it, um, who was, you know, the former road dog. You know, him and Billy Gunner friends. But I know DDP was in <coughs> At least I believe he was. Because, sorry, some of that stuff's a little muddy to me. But the bottom line is it was a three-on-three -three lethal lockdown match. Like War Games, a little bit. Actually, a pretty well-done rendition of War Games. I actually enjoy the lethal lockdown matches until they watered it down and everything. But so Jarrett, and I'm sure he had a couple defenses on TV. I just I just can't recall. I, I apologize for that. But so now we're about a year in. We're, we're getting close to a year because we're out of April. Then they're building this feud... With AJ Styles. And AJ Styles and Jeff Jarrett had a history and impact. Jarrett had put him over at one point, you know, to win the title. He'd won the title back from him. He'd screwed him out of the title, hence why Ron Killings got it for a couple weeks and then lost it <clears throat> in June of 2004 in the first ever King of the Mountain match. Again, the Jarrett won. So now they're building this whole thing where, okay, it's like, oh, it's been a year since, you know, about a year since Styles got screwed out of the title. He had Tito Ortiz. As a special guest referee, and you had a hard, you had a hard justice. 
So now we set, we stop with that, and we go to, after the Nash feud is over, it, it Triple H starts feuding with Goldberg, and you do the whole Elimination Chamber thing where Goldberg should have won, and he didn't, because Triple H had a hurt groin, I believe, and had to wear bike shorts, and wasn't, wasn't able to work out as much. He had a hurt groin. And he bashes him with a hammer that Ric Flair had somehow gotten in there, and pins him one, two, three, and that took Goldberg's momentum away. And even though Goldberg beat him at uh, Unforgiven a month later, the bloom was off the rose. If Goldberg had won in August 2003, I don't know if it would have convinced him to stay, but guess what? It probably would have helped him stay. Like, okay, they're going to give me a four-month run. Yeah, I'm going to lose the title <clears throat> in December, even though I think Goldberg should have held it till the Rumble. I think he should have held it till the Rumble and lost it because Triple H should have held it and goddamn need it. But, but... It, it, it pretty much ends there. So we go back to the Jarrett thing. Tito Ortiz, a special guest referee, AJ Styles versus Jeff Jarrett. Oh, God, you know, Jeff Jarrett's going to find a way to screw, you know, Styles out of the title. Tito Ortiz knocks him out at one point. Styles, spiral tap, one, two, three. Nearly year-long title reign ends. It was within, like, two weeks of being a year-long title reign. So Jarrett's finally dethroned as a champion after nearly a year, just under a year. And Styles only held the title not that long. He didn't hold the title that long. He only held it for a little bit. Um, Raven won the title, like, I want to see. Yeah, he won his first ever Slammiversary pay-per-view. Well, the first ever three-hour Slammiversary pay-per-view, which was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> and Jared was written off TV for a bit, and then we go into that whole thing, but. I'm not going to go into that, because I'm just going to focus on that reign of terror. Yeah, he did win the title back in September and held it till Christian Cage beat him a number of months later, and then won it back in June of 06, and then lost it to Sing and Bound for Glory, and then, took his, and then took his sabbatical because his wife at the time, Jill, was battling cancer and unfortunately lost her battle to cancer. And that's terrible. He did a, he did a great interview piece. It was very lovely. You could tell him and Jill were made for each other. Jarrett's found new love with Karen. Okay. Focusing on that title reign. Focusing on Triple H's title reign. Yes, Triple H's title reign had a lot of similarities. I mean, they both do have a lot of similarities. Facing older WCW guys just as a way to get over. Facing some younger guys. And finally, like, a younger guy. Impact did it better. In the sense of Styles won because at least he was a homegrown talent. Goldberg was just there for a little bit. <clears throat> it's hard to... I'm going to say that Jarrett's title reign was not as bad because at least it paid off with Styles being champion again and then Raven got to be champion. Because Triple H was champion once again just after a few months and then finally put over Benoit but then was champion again like in like 04. So it's really a toss-up here. I will say Triple H's was worse because of the Booker T angle. And because of, like, you know, the blatant nepotism with him. Yes, Jarrett owned the company and that kind of stuff. But, there... Which, it's really hard to say, honestly, now the more I think about it. I'm going to say Triple H's title reign was worse just because of the Booker T angle. But, Jeff Jarrett's title reign was really, really bad. It was because it went on too long. If Jeff, if Jeff Hardy had beaten him at Victory Road and held it for like a month and then lost it, because he was the, the rumor was is actually Randy Savage was going to come in his debut at Victory Road 04. He was going to beat Jeff Jarrett at Turning Point or even Final Resolution 05, <coughs> hold the title for a month and then drop it back. But Savage didn't want to do that. Savage also, I don't think, was in any condition to wrestle at that point. My personal opinion. I love Randy Savage. But Triple H's title reign was just slightly worse because of the Booker T angle. That doesn't let Jar Jared off the hook. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my dive into these title reigns. What do you guys think? What are some ones that you want me to talk about that have similar traits and stuff like that? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Also, it's been Real Honesty with John Ritlin, and I will see you soon.